You understand that? Huh? So N is the noise. Okay? If people are going to come in and out, the LT slamming the door, that's D, disturbance. Okay? Alright? So what do we do in control system design? There are several steps. First of all, if you are given a final project, let's say, I'll tell you, design something. What are you supposed to design? Okay, you must first of all understand what problem you're trying to control. All right, and what's the system, what's the plan? Okay, and what kind of uh, sensors and actuators do you need to put in the system? What's the model of the dynamic behavior? Okay, what are the possible disturbances and noises? <coughs> Okay, if the disturbance is repeatable, it's repeatable, maybe you can use a sensor or a repeatable pulse wave. If it's unpredictable, maybe it's just simple random noise. Okay? Um, in addition, what are the qualities and properties that you wish to achieve or control? Alright, this is an example of an anti-break uh, system, anti-lock breaking system. Alright, so this is a picture of the car. You see a speed sensor over there near the tires and the pump uh, and the pump that control the uh, output to the wheels. So, what do you wish to achieve in this? Many of you may have gone to the car showroom and you see ABS, ABS. Okay, but you may not really understand what ABS means. So, this is an opportunity for you to dig out. Okay, so please be looking at the visualizer. Okay, so what does ABS do? What does anti lock braking system do? It takes in a reference of uh, wheel, so it prevents the wheel from <laughs> Okay, and pass the error into your controller which, which adjusts the brake top to break the car. Alright, so what you wish to achieve is tracking content to the ground. Alright? So the when the when the driver actually brakes, it prevents the wheels from locking up and speeding. Alright, for those who have been watching like you know, I don't know, like fast and previous for drifting. Okay, so what the research is that. So what I want to do is to improve the vehicle control. Okay? And just safety. Alright? So the driver and the passengers. Well to stop and stop on the line and increase the business. But is it all good? It's ABS all good in there. No at disadvantage. Nothing is all good, right? Nothing is free in this world. So it's good in a way that it can maintain stability when you're trying to break. So it helps you break in the safest manner, so called. But it only works very well if um, you have sufficient tractive contact with the ground. So let's say you're on a very slippery surface, and this work, yes, of course, you know, it's been commercialized, it's still safe. But your braking distance may not be as short as you are. Alright? Okay, so I can show you this. Uh, is there sound? Okay, so this is normal stopping. Alright, this one you can see that uh, there are some quite, uh, some wet, some, some, it's, it's, a, it's quite a wet surface, it's not very dry, and it's quite slippery. Alright? Still stop, fine. And this is a very good car, right? I don't know whether you can see my just messing with it. Okay. No, no problem. How about this? If you want to try to stop on a very slippery surface like over on tracks, what will happen? Okay, so we talk about design issues. 
Okay, what do you wish to achieve and what are the limitations? Like you, I wish uh, I have time for my girlfriend, you know, I need to have more uh, time and blah, blah, blah. But what's the limitation? The limitation is you only have 24 hours a day, right? Okay, so with respect to any design or any plans, there's always targets and limits. If I'm a robot, what do you think I would like to achieve in my motion? There are four factors that you should always remember. What do you wish to achieve? Speed, you must be fast. Yeah? Next. Precise, accurate. Next. Huh? Again? You want to go crazy? No? So you want to be stable, right? And next, if I go to the next side, you are you, do you want to, you know, uh, freak out or do you want to stay close? So, with external disturbance, you want to be robust. Okay? So, four qualities you must remember for any control system you have. Fast, accurate, stable, and robust. Alright? So, what do you wish to do? You think of accuracy, you want to command response. You follow your command. Alright? You want to be stable, you close to. Okay, you want to be robust, you can uh, attenuate, attenuate means reduce our traffic of disturbances. Robust despite you know, any changes in the plant, despite any external disturbances, the feedback system is still maintain this stability and performance. Alright, so in standards and control screen lab, you still remember that, huh? although you may feel that you probably don't really recall, but do you remember doing this in the lab? Trying to turn the A all the way up, hopefully that you will track your hands. Do you remember doing that? No? With the DC motor set? Okay, so if you have done that, yes, it's true that turning up the gain uh, does help to track your hands. Why? Because you are going to feed in the error more to the controller, so the controller will react more with the error, right? But there are limitations, but and you can't cope with it. So even though you take your error, multiplied by 1 million, which is a U, so the output of 1 U is KE. Alright? Proportionally, I'm the error. If you take K, it's 1 million. So your U is very big, the control output is very big. But can your system uh, deliver such a big control output? Okay? If you cannot, you are limited by plant capacity. There's nothing you can do. Even if you have to set K to be 1 million, 1 trillion, there's nothing you can do. Alright, the next thing is measurement noise. If you are stuck with useless sensors, okay, in FYP project, no matter how good your control system design is, you are stuck with useless sensors. Okay, sensors with very bad uh, precision. Can you do anything about it? Alright, so these are all the limitations. Okay, in summary, what we wish to do um, for this part? We look at impact, stability, robustness, and performance. So then you see we talk about frequency response and loop shaping. So it's loop shaping. Don't worry for the time being. Uh, tell you loop shaping, in short, you shape L. Okay? L which is your loop. And what is the loop? It's actually the forward transfer function. CP. Okay? C times P. It's L. And L is your loop wish to shape that loop. Alright? Okay? Again, because this is very, very important, we keep repeating and repeating so that hopefully you still remember. What are the benefits of feedback? First of all, if you have feedback, you can actually try to reject your disturbance. Ensure robustness, uh, improve how linear your loop is, improve the bandwidth. Any questions? Any questions about bandwidth? Do you still remember what bandwidth is? Okay, so if you go look at a coding plot, alright, there's a definition of bandwidth which is minus 3 Okay, away from the steady state value. And the bandwidth is the frequency range where your system can function in a linear way. Alright, so we wish to improve that because it will be fantastic if you have a system that's so stable and you can function in a range of frequencies. Alright? So another person may come to you and say, hey, my system is better than yours, it's faster, it's more accurate. Alright? But if you look at 
the rate of frequency that this particular fast and accurate system can perform is so small. So if there's any external excitement to this system of a higher frequency, that's it. You do not know how it behaves. Okay? In the linear way. Alright? So we require also the weighty. We like good tracking and disturbance attenuation. And that is maintained as long as we have very high gain. That's what we said. We turn up the gain. We can try to track very well. Okay? And of course, the system remains stable, provided you are not limited by plant capacity and measurement loss. <coughs> okay? So you see a lot of words here, and you will ask me, is this really useful? Please go and read the uh, past year exam. So here or here, it doesn't change much. Alright? This is really a very theoretical module. Okay? There's still calculation, but it's very theoretical. Okay, so it's a uh, high gain uh, always good. Is it always good with a high gain? So it's tell you that no, that's not the case. If you are just adjust the gain very large, you can easily result in a stable because you can understand you understand this. Okay, even if you have very high gain and you have a stable system, your control output may not deliver the kind of uh, gain that you're looking at. So you have a limitation and you can't capacity. And the measurement noise may cause a loss of performance. Alright, this is a physical example of a differential uh, equation model. So you can see this is a knee joint uh, control. You can see a patient over here. And what we are trying to do is uh, control the angle of the knee. Alright? In short, this is what you do. Alright, this is a T10 uh, parapelagic subject. Basically, it means that along the spinal cord, alright, and a T10, uh, this is a T10 spinal cord injury. So, basically, this person has lost the control. Alright, of his knees. He's unable to move his legs. Alright, but however, he has good trunk movement. The upper body is fine. Alright, so what do you do in this case? How do you help this person? Okay, if you look at this picture, all right, you can actually sort of figure out that uh, it's a system, right? And that's good. Yeah? Because what we are collecting is the electrical, uh, what we are collecting is the joint, knee joint angle on the right hand side. Yes? We fit that, the knee joint angle, your motion analysis that goes to the computer. Okay? And the computer is a laptop that says my lab. Okay? Alright, and then from that, we can actually send out electrical signals. Okay, to excite the knee. Alright, so we say electrical signals to the nerves. Don't worry, we are not going to kill the person. Okay, the currents are still safe, pretty small. Alright, we're talking about 30 to 120 milliamps. Okay, now back to this point, if in your final year project, at any point in time, you realize that it will be one amps of current development. Alright? Okay, so we are going to excite this person with electrical signals. I think in, in short, what does it look like? What are we trying to do? So in, in the old days, or not, not old days, now, a human, normal human being, you have a brain, right? So you have a spinal cord, you have a nerves, the motor nerves controls the motor nerves, the Yeah? Just imagine now that this person has a T10 spinal cord injury, the spinal cord cross is out. Oh, Alright, so what you do is your brain has, you can see, right? So your eyes can send signals back to your brain. You tell your brain what angle is my knee in right now, yes? Alright, so the brain sees something, alright? And he wants to actually move his knee. Okay? Alright, so you can actually set, you know, what angles do you want to move your knee by? Through, I don't know, like voice command? or through a, a, a data input, all right? Let's say we are those right ones. And this goes into a controller, so the controller will send out appropriate electrical signals to the muscles, okay, in the time, so as to move them. 
All right, another example of uh, human motor control, pendulum control. So any of you play golf? Mom or your dad dance? This is a tricky game, although I don't play golf, all right? But I know it's tricky. Okay, so in, in a game like this, golf, I look at it as a pendulum. How do you control the pendulum? How do you control the swing? How do you control the angle? All right? Okay, so in uh, mathematical modeling and simulation, we may have been given a question like this to say, you know, draw the system, the sound, the angle that we want to control. So what do you have here? You want to control the swing, theta, all right? The length of your arm is L, and there's a mass downwards, there's weight. How do you draw it in a um, block diagram? All right, so that's a reference angle. You wish to be at a certain angle. Okay, and you take in the feedback angle. That goes with your controller, which is your brain here. You adjust the swing, which is the top of the moment. All right, and there could be external disturbances. Okay, other, other examples of such a balance control system could be also the set way. Okay. Balance the stick, there's also one, or you go you look at the inverted pendulum. Alright? This is another example of how we actually uh, give you some control systems designed to help patients. Alright, so you see in this uh, video, it's actually moving like you pay attention, it's just that very small. Alright, this is a 44 year old male with a T78 uh, spinal cord injury. So it's paralyzed by the face down. All right, it's four years post injury. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to help him stand without falling down. Okay? So you can see that, uh, does this person try to push him? Yeah? Okay, now what we look at is, we look at the moment, the person, the reference moment versus the measured moment, and his reference angle versus the measured angle, and also the disturbance. So. All right. So it's amazing and fantastic what you can do with control systems, yeah? <laughs> well, I don't know how to do. Okay, and you can you can actually simulate or model such complicated systems how? Like yes. So just a balance control system. Obviously, the it's not a board that you have to control the screen. All right. Any questions? No. Okay. Maybe we can take a quick uh, five minutes. Okay. All right. So we come back. Uh, Three quarters.